a biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. It's Australia Day, and as we've been looking at the birth of our nation, we've seen a lot of evidence of God's hand and work in the men and women involved in the formation of the new colony in New South Wales. The appointment of Australia's first chaplain, the Reverend Richard Johnson, is another example of God working and moving through his people to create a colony where he would be able to move and do his will in the years following the establishment of the colony. Johnson was appointed chaplain of the prison colony at New South Wales in 1786. According to historian Mike Spencer, who wrote One People, One Destiny, this appointment was due in large part to the influence of two notable men. John Newton, the author of the song Amazing Grace, and William Wilberforce, who eventually helped abolish slavery in the British Empire. These men were keen for a committed evangelical Christian to take the role of chaplain in the new colony. I don't think really Christians, perhaps in Australia and New Zealand, really understand where their heritage actually came from. And and I think possibly they don't even understand that that it has a biblical foundation. And when we talk about European history, big events like the Reformation and uh, the work of the Wesleys, uh, Mm. John Wesley in particular, Mm. uh, the way that he was making such a huge impact on British society, uh, and out of that, of course, came those identities that were sent to Australia uh, to be the foundation of Christianity in Australia. Absolutely. The, the, uh, Richard Johnson, for example, was an evangelical Anglican directly out of the Wesleyan revival. Um, so was Samuel Marsden. And one man who had a tremendous influence on Australian history, of course, is William Wilberforce. And those identities, uh, of course, become so well known. They are iconic uh, historical identities, mm. but they've had direct influence on yes. Australia's Christian history. Absolutely. What an incredible legacy for Australia that these two giants of the Christian faith, William Wilberforce and John Newton, were so involved in the choice of Australia's first spiritual leader. It shows us that the colony was not just a British convict settlement, but a settlement that God and his people were keen to see as a Christian colony that would preach the gospel and see his purposes fulfilled. Reverend Johnson did wrestle with the calling to the new colony and was a little daunted by the isolation from family and friends, the many dangers that he thought he would face, and the fact that he would be surrounded by convicted felons. But he prepared himself for his task as best he could and committed himself to God for his purposes. One way that he did this was to attend meetings by Moravian believers in Fetter Lane, London. The Moravians were well known as a very committed and effective missionary-minded community of believers, and they had sent missionaries and believers to North and South America, Africa, the Arctic, and the Far East. Johnson said that he attended their meetings to, quote, learn what was required in a missionary and to covet their prayers that he might be a blessing both to convicts and savages. Johnson and his wife Mary sailed with the first fleet and arrived in Australia in 1788. In addition to guiding the spiritual life of convicts, soldiers and settlers in the new colony, Johnson was charged with providing education to the convicts. Let's talk about some of those identities from our early days. You mentioned Richard Johnson, of course, who was the chaplain on the first fleet, and he came prepared not just to baptise uh, people and and hold funerals, but he came ready to preach the gospel. Absolutely, yes, he did. Um, he was recommended, of course, by Wilberforce, and uh, in fact it was Wilberforce's idea to actually include a chaplain with the First Fleet. And Johnson, although he didn't have, it can't be said that he had a great success, but he was a dedicated and zealous man, and he gave his whole life to helping the people of Australia, the Aboriginal people, as well as the convicts. And as Mike Spencer just mentioned, Johnson's time in Australia was not easy and perhaps it was a a sign of what was to come, the wrestle between secularism, humanism and the Christian church. But he put his hand to the plough and did his best and laid a foundation for future generations to follow on in the new colony in New South Wales. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.